The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning program. I am Foso Zakari, your economics teacher. We are going to correct the last assignment we left in the last class. And uh, the question was for us to identify the different types of economic systems. For the different types of economic systems, we have the following. We have the traditional economic system. We have the market economic system, the plant economic system, and the mixed economic system. For the class of today, we are going to be looking at the different types of economic systems. We are going to use the following plan for this class. The plan to adopt, we have the first the objectives. The next item will be on previous knowledge, followed by a problem situation. We are going to have a lesson activity we have exercises and an assignment. For the lesson objectives, we are going to see that for this lesson, by the end of the lesson, we expect that the learners can explain the features of the traditional and market economic systems. Also, by the end of these lessons, students should be capable of identifying the advantages and disadvantages of the traditional and uh, the market economic systems. Those are the two main objectives we are going to have for this lesson. As previous knowledge, learners live in societies which have particular rules. All the different learners, they have uh, particular rules and regulations that govern production, distribution of goods and services in their different societies. So learners live in societies which have particular rules and regulations governing the production and distribution of goods and, uh, and the services. We are going to adopt this problem situation to better understand the lesson. We are going to take a case where a civil servant residing in a village is sanctioned by the village head for hunting in the sacred forest. A civil servant residing in a village is sanctioned by the village head for hunting in the sacred forest. The question that is posed here, what can be done to avoid this kind of sanction? What measures can be taken to avoid this kind of sanction? So we will observe that by the time we understand the different notions of the different types of economic systems we are going to study now, we will be capable of better avoiding a situation of the person who is being sanctioned. To start, we take the first type of economic system, which is a traditional economic system. When we talk of a traditional economic system, what is a traditional economic system? We are going to observe that a traditional economic system is an economic system where rules and regulations governing 
the production of goods and services is determined by tradition and customs, tradition, customs, and habits of the society. That is, the rules and regulations governing the production of goods and services is determined by tradition, customs, and habits of the society, of the people that are living in that particular area or that particular locality. Another name for this type of an economic system, a traditional economic system, is also known as a subsistence economic system. You will see that for this type of an economic system, or for a traditional economic system, the problem of choice of what, where, how, and for whom to produce is solved by tradition, customs, and uh, habits. All decisions, those basic economic problems that we had studied for, from the previous classes of what, where, how, and for whom to produce, for the case of a traditional economic system, these problems are solved based on the tradition, the customs, and the habits of the people of, the, of that particular locality or of that particular area. You are going to also notice that the resources are owned and controlled by family members. In most cases, resources here are mostly owned and controlled by, by family members. And the goods which are usually produced in such situations is meant for, for family consumption. That is why we have another name for it, a subsistence economic system. Because the goods which are produced here is meant mainly for family consumption. Now, what are some of the characteristics of this type of an economic system? Characteristics of a traditional economic system. As characteristics of a traditional economic system, the first we are going to look at here is that there is a strong belief in customs and habits. There is a strong belief in customs and habits. The people of this type of a society believe on their customs and uh, they have their way of doing things and they believe that maybe something, a misfortune maybe will happen to them if they do not do things that are following their customs or their ways of life do not follow the customs of that particular area. One thing that you will notice here too is the resources are owned and controlled by family members. They are the family members that control and uh, own the resources in this type of an economic system. Here, you are going to notice that there is no financial exchange in this economy. No financial exchange, like selling of goods, buying of goods, is taking place in this type of an economic system, for the traditional economic system. To add, we will notice that basic economic problems, like we mentioned, basic economic problems, and we have mentioned those basic economic problems, what, how, where, and for whom to produce, are solved by tradition, customs, habits, superstition, and religious beliefs. To add, very little use of advanced methods of production distribution and exchange of goods and services are used here or applied. There is limited use of advanced methods of production, distribution, and exchange of, of goods. One thing that you are going to notice also here is that in this type of an economic system, there is no excess, excess production. Since people produce for home consumption, people produce for family consumption, so there is no excess production. It is in the case of uh, situations where they will have to be producing for selling, like in different types of economic system, like in a market economic system, where there is excess production. For a traditional economic system, there is no excess production, as production is done for mainly for family consumption. What are some of the advantages of this type of an economic system? As advantages of a traditional economic system, we have there is no overexploitation of resources. In a traditional economic system, there is no overexploitation of 
of resources we are only producing for family consumption and we are producing in reduced quantity so there is no exploitation of of resources in this particular type of an economic system and the economy too is not sophisticated that is it is easy to to understand since the transactions that take place in this type of an economic system are, are limited to add we uh, another advantage for a traditional economic system is that there is the even distribution of income and uh, and wealth there is even distribution of income and well, and also there is less consumer expenditure, less consumer expenditures in this type of an economic system. The, market, the traditional economic system also has some, some disadvantages. And what are some of the disadvantages of the traditional economic system? As disadvantages for a traditional economic system, the first is that there is usually resistance in adapting to modern and new methods of production. Since they believe on their traditional ways of doing things, they don't want to adopt. It's difficult for people in this type of an economic system to adopt modern ways of production. So there is usually resistance in adopting the modern and new methods of, of production. One also disadvantage of this type of an economic system is that there is usually a reliance on gods for the land, for consumption and uh, production decisions. So they usually believe on the gods of the land for the consumption and uh, the production decisions that they make. There is usually lack of variety too, lack of variety of goods and services for consumers to make choices between no enough variety of goods and uh, services for consumers to make the choices between things production in this type of an economic system is limited and as uh, they mainly produce for for family consumption as a result you will observe that there will be a, a lower level of living standards of the people here since they don't have this enough variety of goods and services to choose between the next disadvantage here is that production production takes place in a primitive way that is they use primitive methods of of production like the the use rudimentary tools like cutlasses holes and uh, all of those type of tools rudimentary tools which cannot be used in producing in the large amounts so that is a disadvantage too in this type of an economic system and uh, also low output of goods and services are, are produced. When we use some of these rudimentary tools, we cannot produce in, in large quantities. So the point just supports the point where primitive, uh, primitive tools or rudimentary tools are being used in this type of an economic system. And uh, we are going to observe also that there is a slow rate of growth in this type of an economic system. When you want to look at growth, uh, economic growth will represent an increase in the productive capacity of a country. But if we are to use crude tools in producing our goods and services, for example, in the case of agriculture in the traditional economic system, there will be a slowdown in the rate of growth because the productivity can never be high with the use of some of these type of tools. That said, we are going to look at the next type of economic system, which is the market economic system. When we talk of the market economic system, what is the market economic system? The market economic system is an individually owned and it's an, an economic system where uh, goods and services are owned by individuals, resources are owned by individuals, and individuals can take decisions on the, what they have to produce. In this case, you will observe that the basic economic problems here are solved by the price mechanism. That is through the free forces of demand and uh, supply. And other names for this type of an economic system, for the market economic system, we have other names. It is also known as a decentralized economy, a free enterprise economy, a capitalist economy, 
or a laissez-faire economy. Those are other names of a market economic system. Some examples of market economies or market economic systems, we only have mere practical examples because we do not have a situation where it is fully, fully market, that is fully laissez-faire, like there is no government intervention. At least there will always be some degree of, of government intervention. That's why we just talk of mere practical examples of this type of economic system. So we have as examples here, the USA, Australia, Hong Kong, Italy, Canada. Those are some of the examples that are near market economic system. As characteristics or features, what are the characteristics or features of this type of an economic system? In a market economic system, we are going to observe here that there is little or no government intervention. There is little or no government intervention. Next, we have individually owned and controlled resources. The resources in this type of an economy are owned by individuals and uh, controlled by them. Own, owned and uh, controlled by them. They take their decision on what to produce and uh, also what to consume. Like for the next, there is consumer sovereignty. And when we talk of consumer sovereignty, what is consumer sovereignty? Consumer sovereignty means here that the producers produce what the consumers want or the decisions of the producers on what to on what they are to produce is influenced by the choices of the of the consumers also in this type of um, an economic system there is producer sovereignty producers also take a decision on what they can produce since resources are owned by individuals and the government has little or no control in this type of an economic system. So individuals can take a decision on what type of business or what type of production line they can get into. Uh, we also have reliance on the price mechanism in this type of an economic system and the forces of demand and supply will determine the, the prices of the goods and uh, services. That is, from the free forces of the demand and supply the market price can be determined freely in this type of an economic system. So there is no influence, no influence from one party on the prices of the goods and services that are supposed to be sold in this type of a market economic system. Also, we will observe that there is no production of public and merit goods. No production of public and merit goods. Why is it so? Because people are there to maximize their, their interest. They are there for mostly self-interest. So in that case, and they will have to make sure that they cover their cost in producing. So they will go in for less production of merit goods and even no production of public goods since they have no ways, like in the case of a public good, to influence individuals to pay for the, for the goods that are produced. We also have self-interest in this type of an economic system there is self-interest and there is competition this competition will lead to the production of high quality goods competition in this type of an economic system since everybody is trying to gain the market share competition will result to the production of better quality goods what are some of advantages some of the advantages of this type of an economic system for the advantages of a market economic system, we are going to observe that there are better quality goods that are produced, like we have talked of competition. Since there is competition in this type of an economic system, better quality goods will be produced, which will benefit the, the consumers. We also have consumer sovereignty. That is, the consumers will, the producers will produce what the consumers desire. The producers, will get into the line of production that will favor the, the consumer. So consumers can always have their choices from uh, the goods that are, that are produced. In this type of an economic system also, we will observe that there is self-interest, which is advantageous to, to, the, to, the, to the business or to any business owner in this type of an economic system. Also, there are many varieties of goods 
and services that are produced, many varieties that consumers can make choices between the goods, hence resulting to an improvement of their living standards. Also, there will be efficiency in production in this type of an economic system, and uh, we will have to benefit from low prices for the goods and uh, services that are produced because of competition. Also, competition will cause these producers to lower prices so as to gain customers. Finally, we are going to observe that there is freedom of enterprise. Freedom of enterprise. Any person can take a decision on what to produce or what line of production to engage, to engage in. As for the disadvantages, what are some of the disadvantages of this type of an economic system? As disadvantages for a market economic system, we are going to observe that in a market economic system, there is the neglect of external costs. There is a neglect of external costs, like negative externalities. Negative externalities are neglected. Since businesses are out to maximize profits, so they do not take into consideration the social cost that is being impacted on the society, like not treating maybe their waste products before dis uh, disposing them, so which may have a negative impact on the society because extra cost will be involved if they are supposed to do that, hence lowering their profits. So it is negative, it is a, a disadvantage to the population because they do not treat this waste and it has an effect, a negative external effect on the, on the population. To add, there is also the neglect of the provision of public and uh, merit goods. We are going to observe that these public and merit goods are goods that are very desirable for the consumption of the population. Well, these are goods that improve on the welfare of the, of the citizens, the public and the merit goods. But due to the fact that it is difficult to, like in the case of public goods, to cover the cost of production through the implementation of a price, there is a neglect of the production of some of these type of goods which could be profitable to the citizens. Also, we are also going to observe that there is uneven distribution of income and, and wealth. There is uneven distribution of income and wealth because there are those people who have the potentials that gain the market share. So they have to use their resources in order to gain more while those who do not have the opportunities, the same opportunities like them, will not have the possibility of becoming like them. So that is why we see there is uneven distribution of income and wealth. The government does not intervene in such situations like using progressive taxes to reduce that gap that exists between the, the, the rich and the poor, for example. We are also going to observe that in a market economic system, there is a development of monopolies, which is disadvantageous. The development of monopolies. A group of individuals can decide to combine and uh, produce as one, which will be a disadvantage to the, to the population because they might have an, a way of uh, uh, causing an influence on maybe the prices of the goods that are being supplied in the in the market. And um, you will observe that there is a production also of harmful goods. Since they are out to maximize profits, there could be the production of, of harmful goods. They produce goods which may not be socially desirable for the consumption of the population, but simply because they are profitable, they engage into the production of some of these goods. Also, we will observe that there is wastage of resources in a market economy system. There is wastage of, of resources. Wastage of resources resulting from competition. Because when there is competition, competition will require that a particular person uses his resources to produce a particular good. Another person uses his own resources to, to produce a good. Meanwhile, one person could efficiently supply that good to maybe a locality efficiently. 
So in that case, when different individuals engage with their different resources, which could be diverted in other aspects, it will result to wastage simply because of competition. And in this type of economic system, also there is imbalanced, there is imbalanced development. The, the development of the different areas is not the same. Those who have the high potentials, the development there will be, will be better than in situations that do not have all the different localities that they do not have the, the, the potentials of production since there is lack of government intervention. To summarize the lesson, we will observe that in a traditional economic system, the basic economic problems are solved by the tradition, the customs and habits of the society. For the case of a market economic system, the resources are owned and controlled by, by individual, individuals. And we have mentioned the different advantages and the disadvantages of both the traditional economic system and the market economic system. We will have to take this exercise to better understand the lesson. We consider a case in a given country X, the producers are obliged to produce what the consumers want. The first question A, identify the economic system in which this country is found. B, which economic term is used to describe the statement producers are obliged to produce what the consumers want. As answers, A, that we should identify the economic system in which this country is found. We will observe that this country is found in a market economic system. In a given country, X, the producers are obliged to produce what the consumers want. We should identify the economic system in which this country is found. We will observe that this country is found in a market economic system. That already gives, brings out one of the characteristics. Like when we mentioned consumer sovereignty there, it brings out one of the characteristics of a market economic system. The B part, which term is used to describe the statement, which, term, which economic term is used to describe the statement producers are obliged to produce what the consumers want. So that term there is consumer sovereignty. The economic term that is used to describe that statement is consumer's sovereignty. When the producers are obliged to produce what the consumers want. To prepare us for the next class, you will take this homework. You will provide a definition to the following. The first, a planned economic system. And the second, a mixed economic system. Our next class shall be on the plant and mixed economic systems. See you in the next class. Unna tege si ma tege yob, unna tege minga ma tege nyom, unna tege majang ma tege ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, gani bana ma tege mot, gani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen